Okay. Hello and good evening to everyone. We're at the Shaw Park Complex, the Cultural Complex. We're here for a very important activity this evening. I'm Selden Melville. Welcome to this first look at the PNM Manifesto for the THA 2021 election. Welcome to all our audiences, social media, mainstream media, all around the world who have joined us to enjoy this short evening present evening's presentation. So let's get on with the business of governance. That's what we're here for, to find out about governments as we're getting ready for the THA elections, the PNM, who have been in governance here for the last nearly two decades and they're seeking for another two. And we've got it here this evening to share with the people in Trinidad and Tobago and around the world what we have in store for them. And the bedrock of our governments and the governance in this country, the PNM has been in the middle of all of this. And most of our history has been PNM's history. So what we'd like to share this evening is what the manifesto has and what we intend to share with the people and ensure that they know so that those who are part of the PNM and those who understand what they're offering, we want to be a part of this PNM mobilization for the 25th of January and beyond. So we have some presenters this evening. I tell you what, things have changed this year because the last year or so, because of COVID-19. So there have to be different approaches made by the people who are in governance to ensure that the people are satisfied and properly taken care of. I'd like to introduce our presenters. We have the political leader of the PNM Tobago, Ms. Tracy Davidson Celestin, who is representing the PNM in the Lambo Signal Hill area, and also Secretary of Health, Wellness, and Family Development. We also have, who is in charge of finance, Mr. Joel Jack, welcome. And Thank he's a candidate for Bacalat, Mount St. George. And he is in charge of finance and the economy. And the candidate, as I told you, for Bacalat, Mount St. George. We welcome you, sir. Thank you. As we move on here to look at our other participants, we will first take a look at our, our first presenter. And our first presenter for this evening will be Tracy Davidson Celestin, political leader, candidate for Lambo Signal Hill. She will address you on the topics that she will deal with here would be achievements, autonomy, digital transformation. Tracy Davidson Celestin is a candidate and a political leader who brings passion, excellence, and a commitment to service, which embodies the true spirit of leadership to Tobago. Right. Tracy has been a youth leader, a teacher, a counselor, a leader of assembly business, deputy Ch chief secretary, and an ambassador. She's currently one of the longest serving members of the Tobago House of Assembly, having amassed over 16 years of service. And she started at that very young, being involved <laughs> with politics here in Trinidad and Tobago, and she has done very well so far. She was also a deputy chief secretary, and now first female political leader of the PNM Tobago. Tracy is proud of her contributions to Tobago, and now leads the challenging division of health, wellness, and family development, where they have been able to successfully minimize the impact of COVID-19 here in the sister island, Tobago. She holds a degree in accounting, Postgraduate Certificate of Management, Diploma of Project Management, and an MBA with emphasis on strategic management. She has a newfound passion as well. 
She speaks Spanish. ¿Tú hablas español bueno? Sí, sí, sí. ¿Suficiente para su trabajo? Sí. Yes. So that's a um, boss lady. We must tell you as well that she will make the first presentation for us this evening. We told you what her topic will be, achievements, autonomy, and digital transformation. Madam Leo, please. Thank you very much. That response was very sedate. <laughs> we need something a little more energetic, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much and a pleasant good night to each and every one. Let me recognize those who are listening to us, whether it be on national media or social media. And then, of course, all of those who are present here in the audience this evening, all of our candidates, I must recognize you as well, as well as the members of the team who are accompanying me in presenting this manifesto this evening. And it's my first time using this particular device, so I'm really hoping that I get it right in terms of moving the slides so that we can follow in terms of our manifesto presentation 2021 to 2025. And of course, our theme for this election is building Tobago together because we recognize that development is a continuous journey. But at the same time, if we are to build an island, and if we are to build a country, we need all hands on deck. And so what I'm presenting to you here this evening, ladies and gentlemen, and those who are listening, is basically a supplement to a comprehensive manifesto 2021 to 2025. And we have a blueprint that we will be uh, distributing to members of the public, whether it be through or social media approaches, whether it be through um, email or having hard copies or soft copies. But tonight we will give you an excerpt of the manifesto presentation with a number of different areas. And so this is our introduction. Um, this is our supplement rather, and it highlights the priority areas for our development going forward. And our manifesto theme is performance, of course, ensuring that we deliver for the people of Tobago. And because we are in a state of COVID, which has been impacting us very heavily, not in, only in Trinidad, in Tobago, but Trinidad and Tobago and the world, um, we are also focusing on recovery of the Tobago economy as well. And then, of course, we will be focusing on self-sustainability because as I would have indicated, we want to ensure that all of our people, all of our residents in Tobago are part of this process and can drive and lead the process for change that we are all asking of you. Of course, we are intent on taking the development of Tobago um, to another level. I would have indicated, and I'm sure all of us would have indicated time and time again, that in terms of the local and local development of the island, we have done almost everything in that regard. And we are focused now on the creation of industries. We are focused now on entrepreneurship and business development so that we can expand our economy and make a greater contribution to our gross domestic product as well as to driving revenue for this island. And so where are we? Our pledge to you this evening as the PNM team, our pledge to you this evening as an administration going forward is that we will continue to be responsive to your needs. Because over the last 20 years in office, we have been working with each and every one of you in the respective electoral districts. We have been working with you in your respective communities. And as we continue the process of building, as we continue to lift each and every one of you up, in terms of advancing and taking into consideration your desires, we are saying that we will continue to be responsive to those needs that you have. We are also focused on continuing the process of building a better Tobago so that we can all enjoy a more sustainable future. So we are not only looking at building Tobago for us now, but building Tobago for future generations or children or grandchildren, uh, so to speak. 
and then the process of involvement of stakeholders or communities and residents in the decision-making process. Because if you are to be the drivers of change, then we want you to be involved in the decision-making and to buy into the process as much as is possible. And so those are some of our pledges to you as we go forward. What have we achieved then as, as, a, as an administration over the last four years and perhaps over the last 20 years? Because as I indicated, we are very proud of our contribution and our investment in the island. But in particular, I want to highlight just a few points having to do with the, stabi the stabilization of inter-island travel. And you would know that for some time, uh, the PNM has really revolutionized um, inter-island travel, and that is between Trinidad and Tobago. And then tomorrow, we will bear witness to another new vessel arriving here in Tobago, of course, for us to, in an effort for us to foster uh, business travel, in an effort for us to foster uh, tourism, in an effort for us to uh, conduct transactions wherever it, uh, in whatever sector, uh, between both islands, that is Trinidad and Tobago. And so that for us is one of the major achievements in terms of this, uh, uh, in terms of this um, administration for the last four years. We have also focused on decentralization of health care on the island. That has been a policy mandate of the Tobago House of Assembly, but more so a policy mandate of the People's National Movement Administration. And now we can boast of 17 new health centers across the island, but more than that, we can boast of two hospitals, all built within a 10-year period, one in Scarborough, Scarborough General Hospital. And yesterday, we opened the very brand new, or commissioned rather, the very brand new Roxborough Hospital as well. And this all ties back into us responding to the needs of our citizens and our residents on this island as much as is possible. And I will always make the point that we outpace the rest of the Caribbean when it comes to health facilities uh, per capita. We have also achieved increased support for the agricultural sector because one of our challenges has always been over the years, food security. And so you would have seen the efforts from our members of the assembly, the chief secretary, including where he has been visiting quite a number of farmers with the, to provide them with the assurance that the Tobago House of Assembly will continue to ensure that we create the policies and we drive the implementation so that we can treat with food security once and for all in Tobago. And then, of course, we are all alive and all very safe, uh, regardless of what is happening in the world. And that is because with the PNM, you would have seen astute management of the COVID-19. And let me use the opportunity to say thanks to all uh, who would have assisted in this regard, although we're still going through the process, the health workers, the members of staff of the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development, uh, of the TRHA, and even our colleagues in Trinidad who would have given to us financial and other support to ensure that we are all safe and alive for today. Where are we now? A projected decline of 14% in terms of our gross domestic product. And that is because we have been faced with the effects of uh, COVID-19. And we have seen how COVID has shut down quite a number of our industries here on the island. And we were well set to contribute even more to the gross domestic product. But because of the challenges that we now face, we are seeing a, decle a decline rather in our gross domestic product. We also have a situation having to do with underemployment, under inability to attract foreign direct investment into Tobago in order for us to expand. We now have issues having to do with food security. We have to encourage our farmers to plant. We have not been able to successfully embrace digital technology in terms of operations. And of course, we have an increase in demand for housing and land for residents, and more so, an increase in demand for land for farmers. 
And these are some of the points, these are some of the uh, situation and analysis that we have uh, taken into consideration and are presenting to you in terms of how we have shaped our manifesto uh, going forward. What have we, and when we look at what has happened with regards to our fall in gross domestic product, I want to make the point in terms of how we have responded to uh, COVID-19 in Tobago. Um, it has been a very comprehensive response that has reduced COVID-19 debilitating impact on us all. Um, in terms of the management of COVID-19, it is of course one of our proudest achievements. And then of course we have seen the relief to Tobagonians through a number of social and business initiatives. And when we do the count, we have spent almost $200 million here uh, within a short time frame in order to ensure that we provide the social relief, to provide the business grants, but more importantly, to ensure that we keep our people safe and alive. And liquidity support programs within the Tobago Credit Unions as well, we have set aside uh, $10 million for that. And then, of course, improvements to the TRHA systems of infection management and control. When we started off with COVID-19, we had one facility to treat with any infection, and that was at the Scarborough General Hospital. And through our staff, through the collaborative efforts, we were able to create an infection management system within a short period of time. And it has been working very well for us. Our priority areas going forward, one, food security and agro-processing. And I would have indicated to you in terms of our situational analysis that these are some issues that we now face in Tobago. And we are very well intent on addressing those issues in this term of office. And one of our presenters will talk to you about some of the highlights that we will be touching on in terms of food security and agro-processing business development and foreign direct investment in order for us to take Tobago to the next level, in order for us to grow and to expand our economy, we must focus on entrepreneurship, we must focus on business development, and we must be in a position to attract foreign direct investment as well. And then digital transformation. We are behind time with regards to how we have embraced technology over the last few years or so. And this is, of course, will be in sync with what is happening with central government so that we are able to achieve the benefits here as an island. Autonomy and self-government are some areas that we have been uh, pushing hard, ad advocating for, uh, for the longest while, and that would be one of our priority areas, as well as infrastructure, housing, and land development. We are intent on ensuring that we can provide over 2,000 um, lots of land to our people here in Tobago so that they can build homes going forward. And you will hear more from, uh, I think it's Quasi, in terms of where we will be taking infrastructure, housing, and land development. Autonomy and self-government. We have been leading Tobago's fight for self-determination for quite some time now. What have we done as a people, and as a party, and as an administration? And so it started back in 2012, where we established the Multipartisan Constitution Commission where it conducted research on self-governance for Tobago. In 2013, we convened the multipartisan forum of political parties with all political parties that contested the 2013 Tobago House of Assembly elections, and all of them were invited, PNM, TOP, the Platform of Truth. And so we hosted joint meetings throughout Tobago and, of course, in Trinidad. And then on the 25th of September 2014, the Tobago House of Assembly Assemblymen, which I was a part of at that time, um, we had a full PNM house. And so we reaffirmed the PNM's position and the Tobago House of Assembly's commitment in terms of pushing for Tobago's autonomy so that we can have self-determination at the end of the day. 
And then we had our Tobago team, which was comprised of a number of different political parties. And then we met with central government or counterparts in Trinidad to ensure that we advocate for placing Tobago's autonomy on the agenda. And so the PNM-led Tobago House of Assembly and the PNM central government, we laid the Constitutional Amendment Bill, Tobago Self-Government Bill 2018, before the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago in the third session of the 11th Parliament. And so what are we going to do in this four-year period? We will continue to ventilate the issue locally and nationally. We will continue to seek the support and cooperation of the opposition in supporting democratic self-governance for Tobago because we want to keep the momentum at the end of the day. We know that it requires a three-fifth majority in order for it to be passed, and it requires then the opposition and also the government working hand in hand in order for us to achieve the approval of the autonomy bill um, going forward and it eventually becoming law. And so we are going to mandate our two Tobago MPs to continue to aggressively lobby for the constitutional amendment that will grant Tobago self-governance. We are going to keep the issue alive in all collaborations and meetings with central government. And of course, we are going to continue our efforts to protect and preserve the autonomy and the territorial integrity of Tobago at the end of the day. And of course, our MPs uh, will play a significant role uh, in that regard. Where are we with digital transformation? We're talking about performance, we're talking about public service efficiency, and we're talking about results at the end of the day. Most of the world has gone online in terms of transaction uh, business, business within the public sector, but we are still pushing paper within the Tobago House of Assembly, and we want to ensure at the end of the day that we are able to move away from that. And so where are we now? We are still paper-based. We have quite a lot of delays in contractual payments. We have a lot of delays in terms of gratuity, and more so we have quite a lot of delays in productivity because staff always running around in division looking for files here and there and it is time now that we move to online transactions and embracing digital technology going forward and so ladies and gentlemen we are on the road to digital transformation we are on the road to advocating for a greater autonomy for Tobago we are on the road to moving forward with land development for people we are on the road to um, implementing a foreign direct investment unit that will see more foreign direct investment uh, come into Tobago. And we are on the road in treating with food security for our people and for Ireland and to eventually be able to export. I thank you and then I hand you over to our next presenter and to the Master of Ceremonies. Thank you very much, ma'am. Let's hear it again. So we move on. I tell you what, I, my script has changed a bit, so I fell out of line with my script. And I'm in the house of the leader, two leaders. And I didn't mention that Honorable Ansel Dennis is here. He is a representative for Buku Mount Pleasant. And he's our current chief secretary. And of course, Quasi Devines. Mariah Mason Hall and Providence, and he's in charge of infrastructure, land, and housing. Let's hear it. You know, one thing I noticed is that um, Tobago probably has the youngest government in the world. <laughs> Let's hear it. And uh, it is a very positive sign because we've always been very much in part of the intelligentsia in the country. And if you look around from a national standpoint, you would see you go to Trinidad, and some people say if the Tobago, Trinidad is like a, a, a ship comes in with cargo, and it's touching almost to the water. When it leaves, it leaves very high up. So if Tobago should withdraw its people out of Trinidad, uh, it could change very drastically the shape and the face of Trinidad and that 
Tobago has been an important factor if you look back at history, where the foreigners fought for Tobago for 30, over 31 times. There were changes of governance on the island. And this little rock here has something very special hidden within it. And uh, we find out every day what Tobago has. Continental shelf? Nobody says anything. We'll move on. <laughs> so our next presenter is a man who deals with all the money on the island, uh, Mr. Joel Jack, candidate for Bacolet, Mount St. George. His presentation will be based on business development and direct foreign investment economy. So that's a bit about Mr. Jack. Jack, Joel Jack, was a public servant for over 21 years. And from 1992 to 2013, before he was elected to the Tobago House of Assembly, and the young man walked in there with class and style and became immediately the Secretary for Finance. And that's a big portfolio but the little man has been able to handle that very well. He is the youngest person to ever hold this position. A past student of Scarborough Secondary and Signal Hill Secondary, he also earned himself a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration and Accounting at St. George's University in Grenada. He then went on to acquire a certificate of course management, accounting, and is now pursuing his MBA at Warwick University in the United Kingdom. He is a champion of working people in Tobago. He looks out for his people and ensure that there's progress in their world. So we want to bring on stage Mr. Joel Jack to make his presentation. Thank you. Challenge your boy. <laughs> Thank you, Selwyn, for your kind introduction. Please permit me to acknowledge the political leader of the Tobago Island Council of the People's National Movement, my fellow candidates, or Distinguished audience and to persons who are locked on to us on the various mediums, either live television, radio, and social media, uh, pleasant, good uh, pleasant good evening. Let me say it's my pleasure to stand in defense of the stewardship of the People's National Movement for the past two decades, and more specifically to treat with our achievement as an island over the past eight years or so. And uh, as Mr. Melville indicated earlier, we have been in office for nearly two decades. And if you would please permit me to outline um, quite briefly some of our achievements to date. And let's start with the economic data and our island's GDP, which measures economic health of any country, and Tobago's GDP increased from $850.2 million just prior to 2001 to over $1.7 billion at our last estimate in 2019. We were able to create over 9,000 jobs between the period 2001 to present thereby reducing unemployment from the levels of over 13% in 2001 to approximately 4.4% today. Another indicator that I'm also proud of as a party is because we were able to increase the number of persons in the labor force with tertiary education from 7% in 2001 to over 21% to date. And I think our investment in our human capital will continue um, over the next term. We were able also, and to persons who remember that period of 2001 prior, 
we were able to avert any major crisis or payment crises under our stewardship over the past two decades, another achievement that I'm also proud of. As it relates to our support for the business sector, entrepreneurship, and as we attempted to facilitate economic expansion, the Tobago House of Assembly under the People's National Movement invested significantly in promoting business development and entrepreneurship as part of our broader economic diversification strategy. Through two of our signature programs, the Enterprise Assistance Fund and the Enterprise Assistance Grant programs, we were able to provide in excess of $58 million to support businesses across the island to facilitate the start of new businesses and to support existing business enterprises. Through the Tobago Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited, we were also able to invest approximately $13.5 million to support a number of businesses in various sectors ranging from light industrial manufacturing to agriculture. Additionally, through the enterprise, through the Cove Eco Industrial and Business Park, the assembly was able to provide much needed factory space and lands to entrepreneurs to either expand or to start their businesses. And as Secretary of Finance and the Economy, I was particularly proud when we were able to welcome Andy Cherry Nectar to start their factory and to assist them in relocating back to Tobago. Through our, our strategic business support and development unit in the Division of Finance and the Economy, we were able to provide the necessary support and training to business, for businesses to assist them to scale up their operations and assist them in penetrating export markets. Ladies and gentlemen, when we look at the number of businesses that were registered during the period over the past two decades, and, these, and this increase was a direct result of the investment by the Tobago House of Assembly to provide the much needed seed capital and financing for business enterprises on the island to start, to get started. But ladies and gentlemen, we are in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic and as Secretary of Finance at the end of 2019 going into 2020, I was very optimistic and when I examined the data and I, we saw that the Tobago economy grew by approximately 1.4% year on year, 2018 to 2019, we were fairly optimistic going into 2020 as we, we were anticipating continued growth and of the Tobago economy and our prospects and our, and our outlook was indeed bright. But then came COVID-19 in November in Wuhan, and then by March, we were all impacted um, by this global pandemic. And as a result, because of the structure of the Tobago economy, um, we have been impacted and our projections indicate a decline of approximately 40% in GDP for 2020, with the primary sectors impacted, um, including the tourism sector, um, the financial services sector, manufacturing, and construction and querying. And as the political leader alluded to earlier in her presentation, the response by the Tobago House of Assembly was immediate, it was targeted, and with the support of our partners at the central government level, we were able to provide the necessary support to the business sector. We were able to provide $50 million in grant facility support to businesses in the tourism sector. And through the assembly, we were also able to provide $4 million in direct funding support to ancillary business services within the tourism sector. Additionally, 
$10 million was also allocated in financial support um, to the credit unions to on lend to their members and to those entrepreneurs who are members of the credit union through the liquidity support program. Additionally, the Executive Council approved the increase in the ceiling of the business um, loan and grant programs from 250000 to 500000 and from 25000 to $50,000. Additionally, we approve additional support um, through our Enterprise Assistance Fund and grant programs, and we focus primarily on at the agricultural sector, light manufacturing, and food processing. Ladies and gentlemen, and to our viewing audience, looking forward over the next four years during the period 2021 to 2025, we have laid out various strategies to ensure that we continue on our path of continued economic diversification and economic expansion. And our focus, we will focus on four on five key areas, sorry, stimulating economic growth and building economic resilience and job creation. We'll be supporting key economic sectors. We'll provide, we'll continue to provide support for entre entrepreneurship and business development, and we will implement a rigid fiscal reform program and we'll continue to stimulate foreign direct investment. Ladies and gentlemen, Instilling resilience within the Tobago economy and facilitating economic growth will be a priority area for us over the next four years as we attempt to ensure that the Tobago economy recovers fairly quickly coming out of the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll also seek to identify and work aggressively to identify new economic opportunities in niche sectors and provide the requisite financial and technical support to, and to steer economic activities in these areas. We will continue to exploit opportunities emanating from the construction of the new airport terminal and as well as the introduction of the new, the, the new fast ferry. And the tourism sector will also be the focal point of this administration as we roll out our plans outlined in the medium term planning framework. Ladies and gentlemen, we will also focus on stimulating foreign direct investment and central to this will be st the streamlining of the processes and procedures to assist foreign investors entering Tobago to do so unimpeded by the current land license regime. And as I include, ladies and gentlemen, the future looks bright for Tobago under the, the People's National Movement. And as I said last, last night, one good term deserves another. And I thank you. Let's hear there for Assemblyman Joel Jack. Let's hear it again for him. Now, Mr. Jack, you came up in a family that played some sport. Yes, sir. Were you able to play anything? Yes, sir. Soccer, tennis, and now I play golf. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> you play golf? Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. And let's hear it again from Mr. Jack. Thank you very much. So we move on with our program here this evening. And people, we got to get involved very much more, you know and show that it's a house of love. This is PNM family, and 25th is a big day, and we're getting ready for that. So hey, show some love for yourself and your people here tonight. Your manifesto is being put out. Thank you very much. Presenter number three, Ansel Dennis, candidate for Buku Mount Pleasant. He is the current representative, and he's also our current chief sec. His topic tonight will deal with food security and agro-processing. Now, there was a time when Tobago was the food basket, eh? and now the basket empty. The dashin coming from St. Vincent and Grenada and the nutmeg, we have to stop that. We have to go back to the old days 
when Tobago used to provide. There was a time when we, when you come, people leave Tobago and they go to Trinidad, they go with a cockross bag. So they had a bag full of provision and so on. Now, we're coming from Trinidad with everything. Okay, so let's hear what um, the Chief Sec plans are for fruit processing and agro-industries in here, Tobago, the sister island. In January 2013, at age 26, Ansel became the youngest assemblyman in the history of the Tobago House of Assembly after becoming the representative for Buku Mount Pleasant, a position which he still holds. Ansel has also become the youngest deputy presiding officer of the THA when he was appointed at age 27. Yet another first with his appointment to that position of chief secretary now, he's another young man who, another young thing, but what is interesting there, Mr. Chief Sec, I see when you were 26, they had all kinds of things in your favor. But as soon as you became chief sec, your age disappeared. Por qué? No sé? So he disappeared. I guess we'll catch up with you at um, 20 years from now. Okay, we're looking forward. Yet another first with his appointment to the position of Chief Secretary on May 6, 2020, as he became the youngest person to hold this portfolio in the history of the THA. And still worked at Republic Bank from 2005 until his entrance into politics in 2013. He has a Master of Science degree in Public Policy and Management from the University of London. Sir. The stage is yours. We'd like to hear what you have to say. Let's hear it for the Chief Sec. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Melville. Of course, let me recognize the political leader of the Tobago Council of the People's National Movement, Mrs. Tracy Davidson Celestine, our distinguished candidates who will win their seats at the Tobago House of Assembly elections on January 25th. Uh, other specially invited guests, party members, members of the media. I will get straight to the point. Of course, I do not have much time to treat with this very critical issue of food security in terms of the PNM's plans going forward for this very important sector. And I want to start by suggesting that the basket is not empty. Let me start there. It mightn't be as full as we would like, but Tobago is in fact producing a lot of food at this point in time. And therefore, I want to start there. Because of course, the agriculture sector, that issue of food security is a very important one for Tobago that presents a number of opportunities for us. You know, interestingly, when I started visiting farms sometime in the month of May, when I became, after I became Chief Secretary, a farmer jokingly said to me in trying to establish the importance of food to the island and to any people anywhere in the world, he said, Chief, I could live on the streets or in a bus shed. You see, I could even walk the world naked. Of course, police may arrest me if I do that. But if I do have food, I will die. And therefore, food is extremely important, not only to us here in Tobago, but to any living being. Can't do without food. But here in Tobago, we have a very unique opportunity in that at this point in time, the country of Trinidad and Tobago is importing too much food, to be quite frank. And the government of the day led by the People's National Movement at this point in time, is making sincere efforts to decrease the food import bill. And therefore, where in the country has the best soils, the most hardworking people? Where in the country? And I would want to suggest to us that that is nowhere else but Tobago. So we have good soils. We have some of the best farmlands in the country. 
we are not necessarily affected by issues such as flooding, as some places in Trinidad. We have a very hard-working Tobago House of Assembly, a number of trained professionals in the agriculture sector in many areas from agro-processing to some of the more technical areas in terms of agri-science and that kind of stuff, who are able to provide support to our farmers. But more importantly, I think here in Tobago, we have some of the most hard-working people in the country. And therefore, based on what I've seen over the last few months, Tobago is well poised to take off in terms of its agricultural trust, in terms of providing food, not just for us here in Tobago, but for the nation and even the region. So I will move quickly to some of the achievements. The list is very long, but I will only focus on a few, again, in the interest of time. Of course, we established recently the Tobago Agribusiness Development Company. For short, we call it TADCO. And that company is really an attempt to subsume the responsibilities of three companies that we had before, Cassava Products Limited, Tico Suave, and of course, the Fish Processing Company. So all the responsibilities were subsumed into one company, and that is expected to give us greater efficiency. And I think that company is really the final piece in the puzzle to ensure that we drive agriculture and food production in the way that we want at this point in time. In addition to that, of course, we commissioned the Agriculture Revitalization Plan in 2017, and we are now working the various parts of that plan to ensure that we achieve the intended objectives of increased food production here in Tobago. The issue of funding is a very important one, and hence the reason we engaged in an arrangement with the uh, ADB, the Agriculture Development Bank, to ensure that farmers and other persons involved in the agriculture sector, fishermen, etc., have the necessary financial support so that they could pursue their business objectives, visions, goals, and aspirations to ensure, again, that we achieve our intended objectives. In addition to that, we purchased a number of assets and equipment to ensure that we could give the necessary support to our stakeholders within that sector. A number of tractors were purchased, and we are waiting a few more to arrive on the island at this point in time. <laughs> and during this COVID period, we made some changes to the business development unit arrangements. Uh, we made some decisions to ensure that farmers and persons involved in the agriculture sector now had the opportunity to access loans of up to $500,000 and grants of up to $50,000. And I'm pleased to stand here this evening and say to all of us that in that short period of time, we have invested some $3 million in the agriculture sector here in Tobago. And of course, that will continue going forward. So those are basically a list, a short list of some of the achievements that we had in that sector over the last four years. But we must involve our young people in this critical sector. And I must say that based on what I have seen, as I said before, I, I just debunked the idea that the Tobago food basket is empty. And I also want to debunk this notion that young people are not involved in agriculture or not interested in agriculture. I have seen firsthand, and I'm sure all of us living on this island have seen a number of young persons, very young persons, even some bright minds who have other choices, but they have chosen to get involved in food production in a major way. And I could even name some of them. There's a guy named Nairon Orr in the community of Mount St. George, a major poultry establishment with serious potential. Fanta Carrington coming out of Kambi, and Ilkun Kun, Kyle Joseph, young livestock farmers producing and doing well in Tobago at this point in time. But we have to continue to facilitate that, and therefore we intend to do a number of things as an administration going forward after January 2021. Firstly, we will promote an island-wide campaign. We will involve, of course, the big men in the business, the experienced farmers, people like Roland Murray and others, 
who are successful farmers making a living out of agriculture. I would not say how much money they make, but I believe it's more than all of us sitting here. But they are doing quite well, and we want to involve them so that they will act as mentors to the young persons who are now seeking to get involved or those who have been involved for a very short time thus far. So we want to create that sort of mentorship program where the older, more experienced farmers will provide mentorship, advice, uh, technical support, and motivation, of course, inspiration as well, to our younger farmers uh, seeking to get involved in the industry. Of course, we will do more in terms of gardening in school. We intend, and I think it's already in place, where every single school on this island should have a garden. And therefore, we want to involve the students from even the nursery school level, primary school, secondary schools, to ensure that they are involved and they are exposed to this critical issue of food security from very early on. In addition to that, we will strengthen our farmers' training programs through the Kendall Farm School and other support systems to ensure that farmers have access to training opportunities, development opportunities. We want to ensure that those programs are enhanced and improved going forward so that any young farmer who gets up one morning and decides, look, I want to get off the block and do something more constructive, or I want to get involved in whether it's livestock farming, crop farming, or even fishing. We want to have a situation where they have immediate access to a short program, whether it's six months, eight months, nine months, that they have access to a short program uh, where they could be trained quickly and put on the ground very quickly and become very successful farmers at this point in time. And I'm saying that situation is already ongoing, but we intend to improve and enhance that. And of course, I have to move very quickly. I see the time lady is already on me. In terms of livestock production, we have a number of plans. And I think the, the most critical thing at this point in time is to ensure that our farmers have access to the two most critical resources, and that is land and water. In Tobago, we have two very promising estates. We have, of course, lands available for livestock purposes in the area of the Hope Estate. We intend to put a number of young, vibrant, and even some experienced livestock farmers into that area and give them access to more state lands. And as I said before, that is specifically for livestock or mixed farming. For crop farming, we have identified Gosebro. And by the way, Tobago has eight farming districts, but from the very onset of this new term, we will be zeroing in on the Gosebro area, right? Because that particular area has some 500 acres of land available for the purpose of farming. And as I speak, less than 50%, right, is being utilized productively. And we intend to change that. And I want all of us to imagine a possibility where that Gosebro area, for those of you who are familiar, an area with paved roads, which this administration did, an area that will soon have a predictable and reliable supply of water, again, due to the efforts of this administration where we started the irrigation project about three months ago. We expect that that project will be completed very soon. And therefore, all the acres of land in that area, or most of it, will have access to this important resource called water. And just imagine where we move from a situation of just 200 acres being occupied and less than that being productive to a situation where maybe all 500 acres of land is actively um, farmed by young persons, by vibrant persons who at this point in time are doing it maybe on private lands or maybe on borrowed space. We intend to treat with that to ensure that we put these persons on lands in places like Goldsboro, where they have good roads, good soils, and access to water so that they can, in fact, transform Tobago. Right? Of course, we intend to also support the fishing industry with the necessary funding to ensure that our fishermen here in Tobago can up their game. We in the PNM want to see a situation where fishermen here are able to move from 
having pirogues to even bigger boats where they could pursue this fishing industry in a major way. And of course, that is all tied in as well to our agro-processing industry, which is very important as well. A number of persons are already involved doing smoked fish, doing farine, doing cassava flour, and a number of other things within that industry, even drinks. For Christmas time, um, we were able to give as our tokens to the various leaders within the assembly, tokens that, were, that consisted of produce right, from our very own Tobagonians, whether it was poncho creme, wines, cassava flour, farine, all of it was produced by agro-processors here in Tobago, and I think they deserve a round of applause. So I have run out of time in closing. Uh, we in the People's National Movement moving forward will continue to be very focused and serious about agriculture. And the final thing I want to do is to caution Tobagonians again. We are getting two new boats very soon. One will be here tomorrow. The other will be here, I believe, less than a month after that one. The, the Boko Reef is the final one to be delivered. And we must see opportunities. Two new boats, of course, we have existing ones, but two new boats moving back and forth each day should not only be transporting cars and passengers, but it should be transporting food. And as we speak, more food, more food is coming from Trinidad to Tobago. And I'm saying we intend to reverse that, and we must reverse that for the sake of Tobago and Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chief Secretary. I tell you what, this is very placid, the way we reacted there. When you listen to the news about food production here and the effort to turn around the whole food situation in the sister island Tobago, what we're hearing here is very inspiring stuff. And I think that the response from our fans here who we brought here primarily to cheer. <laughs> and because the chairs are filled, we're not very cheerful here this evening. You know? So let's hear it. This is about sustainability of food, you know. And if there's no food, man can eat. Okay? And we have to feed our people. And it's very nice to hear that this effort is being made because as a boy growing up, they thought about the school situation. Every school in the country had a garden and all the kids had to have a time in the day when they go through that process of planting the tomatoes and buy gun and whatever so they could sustain themselves. And now we're all studying computers. So we're not doing things that are, and we're losing out on vitamin D and all the necessary things, so we have to pay for that. So we pay as a result of not doing what we're supposed to do. So thank you very much, sir. All right. Last but not least, some say his ambition was to be a priest. <laughs> 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 Mr. Devines, candidate for Providence, Mason Hall, Mariah. He's going to take on the topic of infrastructure, land, and housing. Kwesi holds a BSc in International Tourism Management and Sport Management from the University of the West Indies, and he graduated with honors. Amen. <laughs> All right. <We're> here. <laughs> He's at present pursuing a master's degree in project management. Kwesi is the secretary of the Division of Infrastructure, a post he held since 2017. Before that, he worked as the event officer of the Division of Tourism and Transportation. What's interesting here is that most of the aristocrats here, oh, somebody's calling, <laughs> <laughs> have gone to the banks and worked <laughs> to dabble with the money. <laughs> but you gather the experience elsewhere. And sport is certainly a, a, a very, OK, <laughs> we're alive. <laughs> Sport does a lot, and there are many people out of Trinidad today who have done very well internationally through sports. Mm -hmm. Dwight York, right. Russell Atapi, Brian Lara. So we have names that we can call and people we can look back at as exemplars 
within their scope of what they did. But before he worked as the events officer of the Division of Tourism and Transportation, he was also a lecturer at Atta Lockjack School of Business and Tobago Tourism and Hospitality Institute. Kwesi is also a public relations officer of several organizations, including Mariah Village Council, the Old Bishops Alumni Association, and the Tobago Council of the PNM. Where do you find time, friend? <laughs> okay. So we'll get a chance to hear from Mr. Devine about land and housing and infrastructure. We welcome you, sir, to the microphone. Thank you very much. I thank you very much, Mr. Melville, and a special good evening to, of course, our political leader, and my fellow panelists, and of my fellow standard bearers for the People's National Movement, and of course, the victorious candidates come January 25th. <laughs> Let me say a special good evening to our viewing audience, of course, on social media, those who may be listening over the airwaves as well. Um, of course, my name is Kwesi Levines, candidate for Providence Mason or Mariah. And I guess it's, it's good fate that I should be presenting on infrastructure, housing, and land. Um, I'm really pleased to be here for one key reason. I think we represent, and the division ahead right now represents, the culmination of 20 years of experience in good governance in Tobago. Because we have... <clears throat> Because what this PNM administration has done is form very good habits. And that good habit is the habit of success. We have a track record of success, a track record of delivering projects on time and within budget. And I think that deserves a round of applause. You see, success does not come overnight, and it comes with a lot of experience. And the PNM has 65 years of experience in governance in Trinidad and Tobago. And that is unrivaled anywhere else, probably in the region, and of course within this country. So when it comes to the business of delivering to the people of Tobago, particularly in the areas, those tangible areas, infrastructure, housing, land development, we stand ready and we are in the best position to deliver for the people of Tobago. And that, my friends, is something to be happy about. Moving forward, we are going to be focusing on strengthening our security systems, enabling growth and development, and of course, enhancing our building um, infrastructure. But before that, and again, I spoke to our track record of success. The very building that we sit in now is the largest single seating arena of its type in the Caribbean. It's an engineering feat in itself, and we take it for granted here in Tobago. It's a work, it's a work, work of wonder, and it's probably one of the wonders of um, the PNM here in Tobago. We have developed Tobago from Charlottesville to Crown Point, and the evidence is there, tangible in front of our faces. We've recently opened the Charlottesville Micro um, Enterprise Center. You'll put your hands together for that. And I'm sure if we were to go all the way down the road, we can touch on something that has happened in each and every single community all the way to Crown Point, where currently um, we are on the way to constructing a brand new um, terminal for the a &R Robinson International Airport. <laughs> so the PNM, and it must be said, the collaboration of PNM in Tobago, in the Tobago House of Assembly, with PNM in central government in Trinidad, particularly under the stewardship of a Tobagonian prime minister, has yielded great results for the people of Tobago. And you heard the political leader recently speak about the opening of the, re or the recent opening of the Roxborough Hospital. Think of the investment, and I heard the Chief Secretary speak to it, the investment that we have put into Tobago East, over 250 million, quarter billion dollars we have spent on developing Tobago East. And just to quickly list some of the things, we have done the hanging down and um, rock revetment. And of course, Brother Beko will be pleased about that because we protected the roads in that area. We have the Roxburgh Administrative Complex bringing services closer to the people of Tobago East. 
the Roxborough Fire Station, the Roxborough Police Station. We upgraded the Sid Gray Stadium. We have the Roxborough um, Hospital. We have transformed Tobago East through investing in the infrastructure of Tobago East. And it is something that we can be proud about. It's something that all of Tobago can be proud about because the development that we've invested in is to benefit each and every one of the 60,000 Tobagonians that reside here on this island. We continue to develop our road network, of course, and we see it with the Smithfield connector roads and all of the roads and all of the bridges that we've developed, the Thompson River Bridge, Lambo River Bridge, and the list can go on and on. One of the things I think we should be especially proud about, and we're seeing the growth in that particular area, is the way that we've been able to impact and touch different people as they develop their homes, as they build and improve their homes. We have distributed grants, over $10 million in grants, to close to 800 different families. And when I say families, it means then that different persons within the families are there to, to benefit as well. And we've collaborated very closely with central government to ensure that the National Commission of Self-Help is able to provide um, that support as well. Again, we are in the business of delivery. The PNM has shown that it is in the habit of delivering and delivering successfully. And I'm very proud of that to stand here before each of you this morning and speak to that. But one of the things I think is very exciting, probably the most exciting pardon me, Chief Secretary, about this manifesto, especially for young people, and the political leader alluded to it earlier, is the fact that we are going to now implement the Tobago Housing Unit. And that housing unit will have the mandate to deliver at least 2,000 housing service lots to Tobagonians. And in particularly young Tobagonians like myself, like the Chief Secretary, and of course our presenter, um, Selwyn Melville, or the MC, spoke to that. We have a lot of young people in governance because we, and we understand the concerns and the challenges of young people in Tobago. We are also going to be looking at developing over 400 homes and 250 rental units. And you see, it's not fly by night, and very often people can just say, we are going to do, and I will tell you how. We are going to utilize the experience that the public-private partnership unit has gathered in the division of finance and the economy. We have already forged the partnerships. We have already identified some stakeholders, and we are going to be leveraging um, private sector funding to ensure that we could develop housing for Tobagonians, young Tobagonians, and of course, looking at lower income and middle income. So housing is a top priority for the People's National Movement moving forward from 2021. The reality is home ownership is a dream for each and every one of us. Each and every one. And everyone wants something to call their home, their castle, their palace, whatever have you. But beyond that, we have to look at Tobago holistically. We have to develop a spatial development plan for Tobago. It means that from Charlottesville to Crown Point, and you would re remember that Northeast Tobago is now UNESCO designated as a man and the biosphere site. It means that we have to look at our development in a way that takes all of these things into consideration. So we have to keep our environment, we have to take that into consideration. We have to take the needs of our people, our culture, the agriculture industry, the fishing sector, tourism, as we move forward. So all of these things are going to come together in a spatial development plan, a land use plan for Tobago, put rather simply, because we are moving to a place where the Tobago House of Assembly will subsume the responsibilities of town and country planning. And it means then that... <laughs> so a lot of the challenges that we have with town and...
country planning will be a thing of the past. No Um, under the minister come in but would have um presented to us in terms of first time land um home, home owners home owners so those are some of the things that we can look forward to in this new dispensation come after january 25th 2021 and not i'm not just saying what we are going to do i've said how we are going to do it and that is very important i challenge anyone else to say so other quick things I want to, to touch, again, I spoke about from Charlotteville to Crown Point. We are going to complete the widening of Turpin Bend so that we can ensure that the people can travel safely. And a big ticket item that we're going to be looking at is having the very first marina here in Tobago. <laughs> and everyone knows my passion for the environment, so I will speak to it very quickly as we speak about environmental sustainability and a cleaner and greener Tobago, we are going to be augmenting our wastewater treatment and our, um, our solid waste treatment in Tobago. So it means that we can move to a place where the study park landfill can be modernized and if we even move towards um, less material going into the landfill, we know we have already started recycling and we're going to ramp that up and it's been done by a PNM administration right here in Tobago. The first um, recycling resource initiative, the first in Tobago, the first in the, in the region, as we move forward to ensure that we can develop Tobago in a, a way that we can all be proud. Of course, we're going to cleaner and greener energy as we get people into solar energy and even um, some wave energy and so on because we have the Atlantic Ocean working with us. And let me just quickly get into crime and security and water security as I wrap up. We are going to be working extremely closely with the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service to ensure that extra safety for the people of Tobago. We are looking at those emergency call boxes at our tourism sites to ensure that our tourists and our locals can be safe and ensure that they can enjoy Tobago safely. Water security is critical for us, for everyone as well. So we, we're going to be working on tank farms just like we are working right now in Charleville. So Brother Rory Dillon, I'm sure, is very excited about that. So we're going to be working on tank farms in different areas and working with Wasa to ensure that we have that reliable supply of water. I thank you for paying attention. I look forward to answering any questions about this exciting presentation and these exciting times that we have coming ahead of us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What I can say is that being here this evening has been a very inspirational one because we've had very cogent conversations here and all points upward for Tobago and the island certainly needs that. Going back a bit to um, the hospital, Roxborough and all that, as a boy growing up in the country, you know if the Mr. Mary and them shop close by six o'clock, and you get a headache, you have no caffeine all to get. <laughs> and by the time you take a, get a taxi and come in town, you're dead, you know? And the fact that now, Tobago, we have moved towards developing the east side. And remember I tell you this, the east is gonna be the gem of Tobago in the very near future. Mm -hmm. And this is a very positive start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the show is not mine. <laughs> <laughs> So we've heard and saw what the PNM has achieved and what's in store for the future of the island as the process of building Tobago continues. So we hope that with the energy from you young leaders of Tobago, we'll continue to be you know, very astute, very positive, and we can see the island continue to develop. And we have given so much to the world. And yet we have very little to boast about, although we have a lot to boast about. <laughs> and the time has come when we must take responsibility for what we have and how we treat it. And we treat that with a lot of love, respect for each other, and ensuring that we grow and grow together and see a better future. So I um, want to shift from here because of the time factor.
here this evening. And as promised, we're going to have some of you in the audience um, have a chance to, you heard some really fancy speeches <laughs> and um, development dreams and realities because we're seeing reality as well. So we give you, we, in the audience, we have four questions. And uh, when you come to the microphone, you give your name, who you are, and whom you wish to speak with. And we can get the response from there. Anyone will take up a challenge? Thank you, ma'am. Good evening to the panel, the live audience, and the viewers. My name is Tasha Frank. My question is to the political leader, Mrs. Tracy Davidson Celestine. As a leading woman in society, would there be any provisions for women on the island of Tobago included within the manifesto? Well, thank you very much for the question, Ms. Frank, is it? Are you hearing me clearly? Yes, there will be provisions for women in the manifesto. I just want to make the point first and foremost that the areas that were presented tonight are some of our priority areas. But that does not mean that the other areas like health, education, would not be given priority. We just pulled out some because of the time uh, that we have to present to you. Um, yes, women issues will be a part of the manifesto going forward. Of course, you know that we have been trying to ensure that we have the necessary programs to uh, empower women um, on the island. Um, we want to ensure that we will have programs to treat with issues of gender-based violence, uh, so to speak, and any other w issues that may arise as it relates to women and women development going forward. And so this PNM administration will ensure that we advocate for the empowerment and ensure that policies and programs are implemented as much as is possible. Thank you, thank you. Now, Kosi, I gave you a rest because um, <laughs> you went on there, but there's a question that, who's going to come up next? There's going to be a question for Mr. Devines. They want to know that, um, <laughs> Well, basically, with your presentation, what would you say, and you would give a reason why any of the voters in Tobago should vote for the PNM? <laughs> um, and thanks for that question. I'm sure many people are wondering, and, and usually when I when I um, I'm asked that question, I ask why not, and I and I said it very clearly um, during my presentation. The PNM is, is in the habit of delivering, and it's a successful habit. And I think based on our track record of delivery, the fact that we are able to deliver projects on time within budget, I think it's particularly exciting, especially for young people, that we are looking at 2,000, and I probably I should take off my, my mask because I can hear more clearly. We're looking at the development of 2,000 service lots for, for Tobagonians and 400 homes um, for the low and middle income and even 250 units um, for rental to those elderly, the indigent, and so on. So I think there's a lot to be excited about um, moving forward. There's a lot for young people in particular, young professionals as well, to be excited about. And I think there, there are many reasons to vote for the PNM. But for me personally, if I were to cherry pick any, I think that would be the, those would be the main reasons. Mm -hmm. the, next, the next question is supposed to be for Mr. Yeah. Joel Jack. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I am Tamika Dion Joseph, and a special good afternoon to you, Mr. Jack. My question is, what will change in the economy with the implementation of the measures outlined in the manifesto? Oh, Sorry. What will change in the economy with the implementation of the measures outlined in the manifesto? Uh, thank you. Thank you for your question, Tamika. I think as we have seen over the past two decades, once we implement all the measures outlined in the medium term planning framework, we would see continued growth in the Tobago economy, economic expansion at, at a fairly rapid rate. 
um, what I didn't outline in my presentation um, because of um, time was that our focus will be primarily um, within the tourism sector. In the Division of Finance, we have um, put together our medium-term planning framework to guide the island's socioeconomic development, and the tourism sector will be the focal point. And what we will be doing is, in, is ensuring that we have all the necessary linkages with the various sectors, such as agriculture and the creative sector. Additionally, we will be investing in new areas as part of our digitization process, and also as part of um, our mandate to leverage ICT as an enabler of socioeconomic development and expansion. We could um, see continued expansion of the private sector with continued support for um, business enterprises, either through our enterprise assistance fund programs or through, or, or through the Venture Capital Equity Fund Limited. So all in all, um, my statement earlier about the future looking bright under the People's National Movement was not a simple statement, but um, as uh, we look towards the future once, and I know we'll be implementing a lot of these plans with alacrity, um, Tobago is poised for continued growth and development as we roll out a number of our plans. But the final question is for the Chief, sir. Pleasant good evening, everyone. My name is Marcia Fornelier. And my question is for the Chief Secretary. We have been talking about autonomy for Tobago for a long, long time. Mm. When will it happen? <laughs> <laughs> Crystal uh, that's a very good question. Um, but I'll say a couple things. One, the, the People's National Movement is the only party in this election that is committed to Tobago's autonomy. When you... When you examine the track record of our opponents, they want independence. As a matter of fact, they are quite confused in that they move between the two. One minute they want independence, and next minute they want autonomy. But according to their record and what they have been saying, they are pushing for an independence to be able. But the PNM, based on our track record, we are the only party here in Tobago and nationally that is committed to Tobago's autonomy. And of course, when we examine the track record over the last few years in terms of what we would have done, a process began sometime in 2006, I think it was, where uh, there was a committee led by John Prince. That committee went throughout Tobago, meeting with several Tobagoans, almost in every community across Tobago, garnering the views, the wishes, the aspirations, and, and therefore they got a very accurate idea as to how Tobagoonians felt and what Tobagoonians want as it relates to our ability to govern ourselves. And of course, over the years, the work continued, and I think most recently in 2016, uh, we basically finalized the issue as a party, um, then led by the previous Chief Secretary over London, where we gathered, I think it was in Signal Hill, if memory serves me correctly, in large numbers. As a matter of fact, it was the largest <coughs> number of persons, the largest number of Tobagoonians that I've ever seen gathered in one place discussing and supporting the issue of self-government for Tobago. And therefore, we finalized the issue. We determined what the people of Tobago want, and we formulated a draft bill which was submitted to the cabinet in 2016, I think it was. And that is where it's at, at this point in time. And that is as far as the Tobago PNM and the PNM by extension could take it. Because in order to make the changes that we want to give Tobago the kind of autonomy that the people of Tobago want, it requires a certain number of votes in the parliament because it requires adjustments to the constitution. Currently we have 22 seats in the parliament, two of them being Tobago seats, very strong, vibrant members of parliament who have represented the interests of Tobago quite well for many years. And I'm sure they will continue to do that in the parliament. And we here in the Tobago House of Assembly, we will continue to agitate, we will continue to educate and inform our people on the importance and the benefits of autonomy. 
we will continue to prepare our people and our systems and the island for autonomy so that when it does in fact come, because I believe it will come sooner rather than later, right, we must be ready to ensure that we accept the responsibility and we manage the affairs of the people of Tobago well. So we will continue to put pressure on the opposition so that they can support, because it requires opposition support. The PNM by itself at this point in time with 22 votes in the parliament cannot give Tobago autonomy, and therefore it requires support from the opposition. But I'm confident that when the time comes and they have an opportunity to vote, that they will do the right thing and give the people of Tobago the ability and the opportunity to manage our own affairs here on the island of Tobago. But I want to reiterate that the people of Tobago do not want independence and the People's National Movement does not support independence for Tobago at this point in time. For those words, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Everyone, Secretary is in front of me here, Chief Sec, Council Leader, Secretary Jack, mm -hmm. Mr. Devines, and all in the back here who are candidates for the election. Um, I would think that most people who have been involved in the program here this evening would have been very inspired, would have heard a lot of things, and uh, would think then, I hope that from your presentation, which has been moving, would um, do something on the Richter scale and make it moving and shaking. <laughs> so your impression would be very um, known and well felt at the end of it. And um, I want to say thanks, so that's a wrap this evening for those who are with us, just to let you know that um, this manifesto will be released tomorrow and you can check it out on Facebook and it will be widely circulated as well. I think that you all have done a tremendous job here this evening in presenting your cause for Tobago. And Tobago needs that. They need that enlightening feeling coming to the people. There was an image that was put out here this evening that says, Tobago, we have your back. And we have to wait and see now. But um, from what I've seen recently, has been happening to Tobago and the development that's taken place. As a Gordian, I am very happy with what I'm seeing happen with Tobago. And um, my major interest is to see Tobago go forward because the generations to come, they must have something to boast about. And they, was, they would say, we had a young government and they did very young things. <laughs> One thing Tobago must realize is that I don't know, the gig economy is now a big thing in the world. And some of the jobs that we all were looking at five, ten years ago no longer exist. There's a whole new transformation of uh, working. And then COVID now has brought a different face to work, work in this world. So we have a lot of work to do to make things different on this island. I want to thank you all very much for giving me the opportunity this evening to be a part of this. It's been very inspiring and we Wish you all in the PNM all the best for the January 25th elections of the THA. That wasn't enough. Very good.